Now that we know what a binary number is, I can talk about how numbers are actually represented in the computer. This is uh, called the IEEE arithmetic standard. The typical number that we will compute with in this course is what's called a double precision number. A double precision number uses uh, 64 bits. Um, eight bits make a byte, so this corresponds to eight bytes. And the number is represented uh, split into three pieces. S is called the uh, sign bit. So the first bit in the number determines the sign of the number, minus 1 to the s. So if the first bit is a 0, it's a positive number. If the first bit is a 1, it's a negative number. The next 11 bits um, goes into the exponent of 2. So e is called the biased exponent. And that is uh, 11 bits. So that gives you a, a range of very large numbers. So it's biased because we're subtracting uh, 1,023 in decimal here. So it gives you a range of very large numbers uh, where the exponent is positive and very small numbers close to 0 where the exponent e minus uh, 1,023 is negative. So you want a very um, wide range of numbers. f is called the uh, significant, significant. And here we use the remaining number of bits, which is uh, 52 left, 52 bits. That is uh, one multiplied by one point f. Point is a binary point, and then f has uh, 52 bits. So the last bit here would be represent 2 to the minus 52. So the idea of f then is to give you precision to make numbers then as, um, as uh, close as possible in the computer. So E makes numbers large and small, and F makes the numbers as close as possible. OK. Um, there are some reserved numbers that we should know about. So uh, uh, reserved numbers. So we don't, we're not allowed to use all the E's. If uh, E is all 1's, that number is reserved, right? That would be the largest possible value of E, which is 2047 in uh, decimal. So if E is all ones, um, we reserve that number in two ways. If F is uh, all zeros, then this number is reserved as infinity, okay? So when you, you uh, can get a larger number, basically we're calling that largest number um, infinity. Um, but on the other hand, we need to reserve another number when f is not all zero bits. That number is not a number. Okay? So these two numbers are different. Infinity would be some number divided by 0 would always give you an infinity. You can have a plus infinity or a minus infinity. Uh, not a number would be, say, a 0 divided by 0 or an infinity minus infinity. This is what's called like an undetermined, indeterminate number, right? It could be anything. And in the computer, we represent that as NAN, not a number, OK? Infinity you can calculate with. For instance, you might want to do the integral of something from 0 to infinity. Uh, as the upper limit, you can actually use i and f to specify that you're doing this type of improper integral. Uh, typically, in a calculation, if you got an infinity or you got a not a number, 
it usually means you have a bug in your program or else you have an unstable sort of algorithm. Okay, so it usually represents a problem. Okay, um, the other reserve numbers, if, if the E is all zeros, so let's just call that zero, then what happens is um, the representation of the number itself changes. It goes from one point F here in the significant to a representation which is zero point F. Okay? What this allows is called graceful underflow. So it allows numbers to go towards zero in a more graceful way rather than just abruptly uh, becoming zero. So you lose all precision here. These are called denormal numbers. And you never want to compute with these numbers because you have uh, very little um, precision anymore in your numbers, right? You lose basically all your significant figures. Okay. Um, it's useful to calculate, and I ask you to do that as a reading problem. What is the largest number that can be represented in this computer? Uh, that's called real max. So the largest number, let's say s being zero, the largest number represented would be e being almost all ones. So uh, the first 10 um, bits are ones, and then the last bit is a zero, because we've reserved all ones. So e is almost all ones. Uh, that would be uh, 20, 40, um, 2047, uh, almost all ones, 2046. Okay, you have to calculate it. But a string of 10 ones with a, a last a bit is a zero should be 2046. So that would be a very large power of two times one point all ones here. So this is a number close to two. So if you calculate what that is, you get 1.7977 in um, base 10 would be 10 to the 308, a very large number. So the idea being that if you try to compute a number larger than this, you would get infinity. Okay? This is the largest number you can calculate with. The other extreme is the number closest to zero. That would be real min. Here we're talking about normal numbers. So E is not allowed to be all zeros. So E then is just a one. So it's two to the one minus 1,023, which would be negative 1,022. So two to the negative 1,022 is a number very close to zero times 1.0, all zeros here. If you calculate what that number is, it's 2.2251 times 10 to the minus 308. Okay? So this is the largest number that you can uh, represent in the computer. This is the smallest number before you enter denormal numbers that you can represent in the computer, okay? Usually, the range of numbers here is wide enough that you don't run into any trouble. Okay, another number which is very important is called machine epsilon. Um, we'll call that EPS. That's machine epsilon. This tells you the spacing between numbers. So if we have a, a one, a number one, we can ask what is the machine number that's just larger than one. That's what we call machine epsilon, so one plus machine epsilon. So there is no numbers you can represent between one and one plus machine epsilon. If you calculate a number that's lying in this gap, the computer will round it. It will either round it down to one or we'll round it up to one plus machine epsilon. 
using the representation here, you can compute machine epsilon. You look at what is the representation of the number one, and then what is the representation of the number that's the closest to one, right? So that means uh, you have a single uh, f bit all, all the way down at the lowest um, possible value. If you do that calculation, then you would get machine epsilon turns out to be a small number, but it's 2.22 times 10 to the minus 16, okay? So that tells you basically how compact numbers, uh, how compact the numbers are in the computer. Of course, when you go up in value here, because of this exponent here, you would say a number just larger than two would be two plus two times machine epsilon, okay? So the spacing uh, increases by a factor of two every time your number moves up by a factor of two. Okay, machine epsilon uh, is very important because if you look at the, say you're adding two numbers, x plus y, we can write that as x times one plus y over x, okay? So we might get this equal to x if y over x then is, uh, let's, let's make it positive, but y over x then is smaller than by round off error, by rounding, sorry, by rounding, smaller than machine epsilon over two. And then you would uh, just get one here, one plus y over x would be equal to one, so x plus y would be equal to x. This is important to know for round off error. If you try to add a small number to a very large number, um, you may not change the large number if the number is, if y over x is smaller than machine epsilon over two, okay? This is a real source of errors, okay? Uh, adding a small number to a large number. The other source of errors would be uh, subtracting two numbers that are very similar to each other, um, and uh, you have to be careful that there's enough difference between them that you don't lose your uh, precision. Okay, so let me summarize. So this is information that is useful to have as background knowledge. Um, you don't really use this in a computation, but you have to be aware that numbers are represented in a certain way. There are holes in your number system. There's maximum numbers and minimum numbers that you can uh, deal with. This is the IEEE standard. It's interesting to see exactly how numbers are represented. Uh, we're trying to do two things here. We're trying to have very large and very small numbers, and we're tr trying to have very precise numbers. Uh, IEEE arithmetic also lets you to define an infinity and define a not a number. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.